I am going to try to explain to you is the legal aspects of the problem of the blockade of Gaza. First of all, the first um, uh, thing that we have to mention is that the situation between Israel and the Hamas is a situation of armed conflict. Why is this important? Because this means that on the relations between Israel and Gaza uh, apply the rules of the laws of war, which means, and we'll come back to this in a moment, that you may um, control ships going to Gaza even on the high seas. You may not do it in the territorial sea of a third country. We could not have done it in the territorial sea of uh, Cyprus. But on the high seas, in time of armed conflict, you may check uh, vessels, that, vessels and aircraft that are going to the other side. This was the introduction. Now, I prepared a definition of what is a blockade. I'm afraid it's a little bit too long because you will fall asleep. The main idea is a blockade means that one state prohibits the <coughs> entry and the exit of both neutral and enemy ships and aircraft to an area which is considered by this party to be subject to this blockade. And you have to define very clearly what is this area. Where are the borders of this area? You see the whole definition was two pages, too much for you. <laughs> so now we know what is a blockade. Now the first question that we have to deal with well, it's the second. The first was a definition. The question is, um, what are the sources of the law on blockades? And this is very interesting, because until this very day, the rules on blockades are still customary international law. You will not find an international treaty which deals with this problem. So I'll give you a list of the documents which mention it, but remember it is customary law. So the first mention of blockades, well, the blockades have been in existence for hundreds of years, but it was mentioned specifically in the 1856 Declaration of Paris after the Crimean War. But this is a very short mentioning of this blockade. Second text, which is much more important, more detailed, is the 1909 London Declaration on Naval Warfare. Now this declaration really had the intention to codify the rules concerning the war on the sea. But unfortunately the states that participated in this declaration did not ratify it, which means it has remained a declaration, but it is not a treaty because it has not been ratified. Nevertheless, the manuals of the laws of war of the most important countries, I would say the United States and England and Germany, and there is also another manual <coughs> which was prepared by an international group of experts. They call it the San Remo manual. They all say that the laws of the blockade are still the laws <coughs> of customary international law. And they define these rules very clearly. Now, the very important question, of course, is what are the conditions for the legality of such a blockade? Now, the first one is that you have to declare and notify as much as possible if and when you apply a blockade. It has to be notified as clearly as possible to all those who might be involved in a problem concerning the blockade. Second question is effectiveness. You cannot apply what they call a paper blockade. A paper blockade is not valid, it's not legal. It has to be effective, which means you have to apply and to in enforce the blockade, otherwise it will not be valid. And now we come to the third one, which is if you apply a a blockade on a certain shore, you must be sure that you do not cut off from the high seas the territorial sea of a 
foreign state. Uh, for instance, uh, uh, if we had had a situation where you cannot get to the territorial sea of Egypt, except if you go through the territorial waters of Gaza, then I would say, here you have to make an exception because you cannot get to that territorial sea without going through the area which is located. And now we come to number four. Um, it has to be based on equality. If you apply a blockade, it has to apply to everybody and not only to some ships or some aircraft. Of course, there is always the possibility that the state which has uh, imposed the blockade may give special permission to certain neutral ships to go through, but these are the exceptions. It has to be in principle applied to everybody. Uh, and now we come to the next uh, condition. Um, you must permit the passage of humanitarian assistance. And this is a very interesting provision because, and this I looked up, of course, very carefully. For instance, in the San Remo manual of 1994, they say you must allow the passage of humanitarian assistance, but on two conditions. That the state that applied the blockade can decide where and when and through which port the assistance will reach the, the coast. And in addition, there is also a possibility to require that a neutral organization, a neutral person in the, on the coastline uh, should control to whom the assistance goes. They say like the, for instance, the International Committee of the Red Cross can check where does the assistance go. Does it go to the civilians or does it go to the Hamas in this case? And uh, if you are interested in this provision, I think this is number, I think 103 of the San Remo text. Another provision, another thing which I wanted to mention is, you may not starve the civilian population. This I mentioned already earlier. This is not written in the 1909 text, of course, but this is the result of general international law of war as it has now been <coughs> accepted. So these, I think, are the conditions for the validity of the blockade. Now we come to the next question. Um, the question is, what can and may be done to a ship that is trying to disobey this blockade? And here we have to make a distinction between merchant ships and warships. With regard to merchant ships, the principle is that you have the right to what they call um, capture, the word is used, the use the word they use is capture, visit, search, and if the if the um, ship resists you may even attack it. This is based on all the three or four manuals that I mentioned earlier. Now the next question would be, where can you start to apply this blockade? Where can you start, in, in what kind of waters can you start to, um, to control? And the answer is, as soon as it is clear that a certain ship intends to break the blockade, you can start to deal with it even when it is on the high seas.